Welcome to Anderson Penn's Sunday Brunch Menu 3 for Sunday, April 17th, 2022. I am here with Lisa Anderson herself. Woo. Happy Sunday and happy Easter. Happy Easter. How are you? I am excellent. It's nice to have you here. You've been here all week. You were here for the uh, podcast. Yes. Uh, we just posted your top five rebel pens, Ooh, which good. are your top five non-fountain non -fountain. pens. Uh, and today is Wink Wink Easter Sunday, and uh, we're not having a meal together. No. Because you're really not here on Easter Sunday. But your store in Chicago is closed. Yes, yes. We will be closed. Closed. So what I'm, are you going to do on Easter? I'm going to sleep in. You're going to sleep in? And I think I'm going to take some coffee and go to the Bean. If it's nice, get some fresh the bean air. in Cloud Gate, I think. The Cloud Gate, yes. Yeah, I like yes. calling it the Bean, but the real name is Cloud Gate, I Yes, think. and I will see if the Art Institute is open and maybe go there. I don't know if they're open, I but don't. they should be check. open because it's a good tourist day. Yes. Uh, whenever I go to the Bean, I have to touch it. Just, just yeah, it was recently vandalized. Uh, yeah, there was graffiti. Yeah, it was and terrible. They caught the person, though. Yes. And I imagine it cleaned off nicely. I hope so. I hope so. I don't know why I like the bean. It's interesting. It's just... And it's also interesting to see all the other people who are around it, like, yes. in but awe. to go it. underneath is really cool. I like to walk through yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you don't do that every morning on your way to work? Now well, when it's cold. I was going to say, now that the weather's changing. Now that the weather's nicer, that. I can take the long way. But when it's brutally cold or raining or now, snowing, I go... by long way, you mean go down a block, go through the bean, and then come back up. It's, good not, it's not two miles over out of Over a way. block, <laughs> across the street, through the bean, down a couple blocks, and then over, over an the extra river, block. Through yes. the woods. To Barefoot Anderson uphill Penn. in the snow both ways. Both ways. Yes. That makes sense. Uh, for Easter this year, I got a bone-in ham. And I got that from Jacob's Meat Market. Awesome. And I said, please give me the smallest ham you have, the smallest bone-in. I like the bone-in. Okay. It's, uh, it's like four pounds. Okay. So that's enough for the week, really. That's a lot of leftovers. That's a lot of leftovers. Yes. Um, I don't know if I will do anything with the bone. You can do you make some soup soups or something. Or something. Okay. But I don't usually make soups. But if I find a recipe, okay. I could do it. You could call I have, I, I have the potential of doing yes. something with the bone. Plus, I, I do find that a bone in ham tastes better. Okay. Oddly enough. I'm probably going to get sushi. Uh, sushi's a good choice. <laughs> good choice. Uh, usually, it's your husband here with me. I know. Uh, and we, tra we trade a joke or two, but this time I just brought I'm some jokes. I am not prepared. I am just going to give you jokes, but before I do that, I'm going to say to the audience, please, like this video and consider uh, subscribing to the channel because Lisa really likes it when that happens. <laughs> And since it's Easter, I think I have some Easter jokes, okay. I think. This is um, about peeps. I don't know. Let's try this first okay. one. What do you call a rabbit with fleas? Disgusting. Bugs Bunny. <laughs> See, not really Easter, but there's a bunny in there. Okay. How do you get a letter to the Easter bunny? You write it. Hair mail. Oh, my God. H-A-R-E, <laughs> of course. I get mail. it. Um, what is your favorite Easter candy? That's not a joke. You're it's just not asking a joke. Me. I'm just asking. Uh, um, uh, the lint little Easter chocolate uh, okay. bunnies that come in the gold, and if they have the dark chocolate, that's the one I like. Okay. Do you like those little weird peeps? Uh, are you giving me some? No. <laughs> <laughs> then no, I can live without those. <laughs> I'm not a big marshmallow. No, candy they're just little fan. balls of sugar. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't mind calories, but I want them to be tastier. <laughs> okay. Um. After that, I have uh, uh, show and tell. Great. So you, what do you got? Uh, I have <laughs> a newish acquisition okay. that I have mentioned a few times on the podcast. It is uh, a vanishing point. Yes. It is a limited edition, uh, special edition, the what? one of, from 2007. That's really pretty. Uh, it, they called it the Orange Crush. That was the first year they did these annual. Nope. <laughs> I'm always dropping <laughs> pen. <laughs> The first year, Not so special anymore. The first Sorry, year guys. they did them. Uh, so in 2007, they made 2007 of these. Okay. I, uh, mine is number 1092. Oops, I've just given everybody my pin for my <laughs> debit card. Um, and they came in a very nice box. Those boxes are came cool. Came in a very nice yes. box. Yes. Uh, I love these. Matchy matchy. And it's leather, orange leather. I don't know where they found the orange cow. Um, and so, of course, you never use the box because right. that will work. That one's away. a cool one. It is very nice. Very nice. And 
they come up. They did the pink one in this box too. It was pink leather, but I don't know of any others that they did the leather box. No, I happen to have. This is not my most recent acquisition, but I have one of the um, limiteds as well. And this came in a light blue clamshell. Right. Right. So this is different than yours. So that was very cool. But I just. Uh, Vanishing points are great. Put some orange ink in it. Oh, nice. This is the Caveco. Sunrise orange. Okay. As as uh, suggested by Steph. Nice. Um, a very nice. Uh, I wanted something that matched, but wasn't screaming. It said orange, but didn't scream orange. Okay. That's, that's the one. Very cool. So that's what I brought. All right. Because that's just a cool pen, and I have a an orange leather notebook. Yes. That, that this is always on top of. Perfect. Because I, for some reason I like the colors to go together. Astonish me. What have you got? I have two. You because brought two? I never just do one. No. I never follow the rules. Um, so recently we've talked about um, my Fantasia, my Esterbrook JR Fantasia, which is so sparkly. Even I, I got it. one of those. I know. These are beautiful. Now this um, one isn't yours. No, this one is not mine. Mine um, actually is back in, in my apartment in Chicago. Um, but I love the size. Even unposted. No, I don't think I post mine. I post everything. Uh, unless it flops off. Do you post your vanishing points? Yes. Twice. <laughs> every time I write with it. Um, I just love the sparkle. I love the color. and Especially under these lights. That sparkle yes. is really... I've never seen it sparkle quite like that. Uh, so you I'm just need to, to come here in this setup and use it. I look like I'm doing a piston. Yeah, don't do that. No, I don't post this one. I don't okay. post it. Well, that's one of them. And I got the... Uh, the the, the very broadest, the stub. Okay. The stub I always get the fine. I like a fine. I, I usually write with fine nibs, but I wanted to see the ink coming out of that one. So. Okay. And then uh, something that I got recently, uh, this is the Pilot um, I was say that Stargazer. Looks like a Stargazer. Oh. Uh, the, well, actually, this is the Stella um, 90S. Yes. So this is the pre-version. The pre-Stargazer yes. version. Yes, these were the Stella and then... Uh, that is a cute pen. At some point, um, they became the uh, Stargazer. I love these. I'm I was that's sad. a slip cap. That is a slip cap. Um, I was very sad when they discontinued these. Um, but I love the size. See, that's almost... Almost you have to post yes. that one. Just to make it large enough. Yeah, love it. So, and it's got a little bit of sparkle, a little shimmer. I, mean, I was going to say that, but it's I, got a little I, sometimes shimmer. I think I see sparkle where it doesn't exist. It's just the sparkle this. in your eye. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like that it's a slip cap. Mm -hmm. No longer Looking available, easy. though. No. So, sorry. There's a little tease. Well, that's okay. This is no longer available here. <laughs> you can sometimes find them. Yes. Anderson Pens, once in a while, gets one of these. We do. We get all um, sorts of interesting things. Uh, I didn't get this one from Anderson Pens. Oh. <gasps> uh, you didn't have one when I was... Well, that's uh, true. You don't always have one. I know. You have had them before. Though. Yes. Um, but that just... It took me yeah, a long look, time to find it. Syracuse colors. Ta-da. Go orange, man. Uh, this is my favorite. Okay. Uh, you know, this... So the, the JR is a great pen. Um, I really like it. This pen always starts... Not saying this doesn't, but I'm just, it doesn't matter where I've been. It doesn't matter how long it's been since I've used it. It always writes. I like that in a pen. <laughs> I like that a lot in a pen. I can, I can neglect, it's like a, like a succulent plant. You can neglect it and ignore it. And it's just still. Is that what you do to your succulent plants? Yes. You just neglect it and ignore it. Yes. And they grow really well. The problem way. I have with the JR uh, Fantasia is that now I want all of the Paradise, which is the yellow. Oh, those are pretty. They're very pretty. Yeah. Uh, very tropical. Very tropical. And just looking at it makes me happy. Yes. So, and I don't like that in a pen because then I, I, I need to have them. <laughs> well, you could maybe skip the blue since you already have this and you could just get the orange and the yellow. The orange and the yellow. There's an the orange. I just need the yellow. Okay. There you uh, go. Okay. Problem solved. On the way out the door. Okay. Very good. Glad I could help with that. I don't usually keep this in the box, but since you, I was... Oh, you keep it. Since I was taking the box, I did have it in the box. Yes. No, I had to dig the box out of a storage box. Oh. And I'm going to put mine away where I travel with these. Uh, should we mention that? Because even I said that's a very nice case. So also no longer. Available. I haven't. Yes. Yeah, so other things to tease you with. Um, I have uh, an old Levenger's um, pen case that whenever I see them, I try and snag them. They have two um, 
card pockets over here. And then, yeah, sorry, two card pockets, one inside, like and then it like holds the four. These but, are leather straps, aren't they? Yes, but I always put, put a, one. a small yeah. fifth one in there. Yes. That is a nice. That is a pretty color. color. That is a very pretty dungeon. So there we go. I think uh, last week at brunch, I confessed to your husband that when I first got into fountain pens, I swore I would never buy a modern pen. I only wanted vintage. And I also swore I would never spend more than $100 on a pen. Oh, I don't and know how which long did those, that last? I don't know which of those is uh, crazier. But I also said I will never have a vanishing point. And how many do you have? Uh, like five at the moment. And that is not even the maximum <laughs> I've ever had. Because I, my first thought was the nib is too small. I like I like a large nib. I like that's okay. what I like about a fountain nib is to see the nib, and so that one just hides there. Right. Um, but also, it seemed too much like a ballpoint. Like, but that's part of the appeal. Somehow, that got me. It's the the, the kind the of the ballpoint really mechanism. Got to me. And the nib plays peekaboo with you. Come on, it's cool. Yeah, I I don't know. I said I'll never get one when I just saw other people with them, but okay. somehow as soon as I tried one and was exposed to it, I don't know how you can not like this pen. Yes. And there are so many different colors, and, and if you want an orange one, you can find one. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, you'll be able to find, you give it enough time. It's like my Caveco Safety yes. filler from last week. You give it enough time and six Sarge on the case. Yes. People find that pen for you. I'm also very unhappy that in Japan, like all these little mom and pop shops can have like 50 uh, made. I should mention that. They don't do that here in the US. It's only what they import into the US or export to uh, us. But in Japan, you can get a lot of the little stores have their own color or their own design or whatever. We have a good friend who has this amazing collection and many of them are Japanese domestic market only. I was going to mention, uh, now that you've reminded me, that this was a 2007 special edition, I think right. they call it. They did make some orange ones in 2005, but it was specifically for one little yes. store in Japan, and there's, they didn't make very many. Right. You can occasionally find an orange one that looks like this, but is not numbered. It doesn't have the, the, right. the number slash 2007 on it. And they've got to be even rarer than, than this. Um, but yeah. We, we need a P.O. box in Japan, and then we can order those. Okay. I mean, Just we, get right on get that. A, get a, we'll pick the color. Pick okay. The color. Um, now that we've done that, mm -hmm. if you watched last week's brunch, you I know did. that I gave your husband a little quiz. Yes. How did he do? I forgot to mention this, by the way. Okay. <laughs> I thought you watched it. I did. <clears throat> how did he do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think he did okay. He got three out of... He actually got three out of three. Okay. But he got the one I didn't, he shouldn't have known. He guessed on it because okay. it was multiple choice. <laughs> Excuse me. And so he won a sample of my previous Ink of the Week, and that's what's on the table for your prize if you get two out of three. What color is That is the <laughs> Karen Dosh Organic Brown. Okay. Oh, you were there on the podcast. Yeah, it's I was. It's lovely chocolate okay, color. Okay, it is. Yeah. All right, so what are my questions? So I've got uh, three questions. One... I say you're going to know, one I say you should know, and one you probably won't know. So, But you only have to get two out of three. No pressure. Okay. So the first one is on our YouTube channel, Anderson Pens, we recently posted Brian's top five under 500. Those are his top five fountain pens under $500. That's between $200 and $500. Okay. In four guesses, can you name three of his choices? Waterman Curran has to be one of them. That's, That's one, one of his favorite I don't favorite even have to pens. look at my notes All for right. that. Waterman Curran. Um, uh, it's got to be a Sailor. Uh, the Riello. He did pick the Riello. Okay. Uh, and my guess was he was just going to pick the 1911, but he picked the 1911 Riello. Right. Uh, well, he loves the Riello. Yeah. Um, he made that clear. He likes interesting material. So, the platinum celluloid in 
It doesn't matter. You mean cellular? 37, 76 yeah. cellular? 37, yes, that was okay. the one just, He oh. chose the koi. Okay, I was going to say maybe to the tortoise. Specific. So, okay, yeah. I would have no. gotten like half points. He chose Pelican M. I put 400, but I know it was 600. Okay. Uh, the Pilot Custom 823. Yeah, he does like that. It holds a ton 30, of ink. Platinum 3776 celluloid. Good. Uh, Sailor 1911 Rialo. I said he was going to choose the 1911, but in that dark blue color. I forget the name of it off the top of my head. And uh, I didn't say Waterman Corinne, but... Oh, he loves that. I think that. I said the Hemisphere. I think. I forget now. Well, uh, I don't think the Hemisphere counts price-wise. No, it doesn't. But so he I, loves I the Karen. In fact, the reason we started to carry the Karen was because of Brian. Right. We recently had some hemisphere with a wavy uh, cap, and yes. he said that the Karen is on order, yes. and he's already got his Yes, name on. he does. Okay, you're one for one Nobody so far. cleared that purchase with me yet, though. <laughs> but he announced it on the podcast, which <laughs> is automatic approval, right? Yeah, no. Okay, what's my next question? <laughs> Your next question. In our last podcast, and this is the one you and I did together, you and I talked about the new Twisby Diamond 580 white with rose gold that will be available for pre-sale this coming Wednesday okay. and for shipping this coming Friday. With regard to this pen, can you name the parts of this pen that are white? The cap, the piston knob, and the section. Very good. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the barrel? It. Clear. Clear. And you don't much care for clear I'm not a clear pen fan. In fact, I was talking to Philip not too long ago on the phone, and I mentioned that. I'm like, you know, I would I would buy a Twisby, except, number one, I don't like pistons, and number two, I don't like clear pens. <laughs> and he reminded me, they make the um, Twisby Classic, which comes in the black, the burgundy, and the blue. So at least I wouldn't be able to see the ink. And, and you don't like seeing it because it gives you some sort of anxiety. Because I'm going to feel obligated to keep keep it full. Keep it full. I like it when it is like sloshy. half just sloshy. I okay. like sloshing. But that's okay. We're all <laughs> entitled. Okay. Uh, so you've already won your sample of the Karen Dosh Organic Brown, but this awesome. is the fun question that you probably shouldn't know, but maybe okay. you can get. Uh, I want you to think back. In 1927, <laughs> <laughs> Assistant Secretary of Commerce of Aeronautics, no, Assistant Secretary of Commerce for Aeronautics, William McCracken, presented a pilot certificate, sometimes called a pilot's license, to a well-known individual who was desperately in need of one. Who was that individual? Amelia Earhart. Very good guess, but not right. Lindbergh. No. Um, Santa Claus. What? I know. I know. <laughs> But well, what was he doing? He was flying illegally before Apparently that? Apparently so. But this time, uh, in 27, they gave him permission. Santa Claus went to the Commerce Department in Washington, D.C. sometime in November or December 1927 and received a pilot's license, airway charts, and assurances that the lights would be burning on the airways. I don't know what that means. The airways, how do they light them up? What would he have done if they denied him? I think this was something public publicity-wise. Okay. I'll, have, I'll have Justin show everybody a picture. And in the meantime, I'll show you a picture just to prove that oh, it actually did happen. This. Oh, my God. I already sent you this picture in case you didn't notice. He looks so skinny. He must have been flying yeah. on his own before. <laughs> Don't know. So Interesting. All right. Interesting. Well, I, I, I did not get that. something I ran across and okay. just thought it would be funny. And it was. It was. Because I, I was thinking, I didn't even look up the the years, but I was thinking, uh, she's going to say Amelia Earhart. Yes. <laughs> because that sounds like it. That sounds like it. Um... Great, thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 now the meat of the matter. We have some scheming to do. Okay. And we're going to scheme about how to get a friend or loved one into fountain pens. This is somebody who isn't at all interested. Okay. Or, yeah, someone who isn't at all interested. Because a person who is a little bit interested, they're already interested. Why do you want to share? <laughs> <laughs> I want to share with everybody. Uh, I okay. wrote down my notes. What, what's your number one tip, if you have one? In no particular order, maybe. Um, number one, start with something easy. It has to be no maintenance, no cleanup, um, super easy. Yeah. And you could even start with a rollerball to at least get them into something better than a hotel or a cheap office BIC. But once you go up from a rollerball, the varsity is perfect. Yeah, um, so you're talking about uh, gifting them something. Or, or making or, them buy. Or loaning them loaning or, or them. something. Yes. Uh, 
Uh, letting them use your pens is, yes. is on my list. Uh, first of all, I say talk about the pens. The more you talk about yes, it. Yes, and show them. And show them, let them see you using it. Uh, and, and because when I talk about pens, I, I like to think I'm passionate about pens, at least enough to where it looks like passion. And passion is uh, infectious. Yes, So when absolutely. someone talks to me about something about which they are passionate, if an architect talks to me about some project they're working on, I want to become an architect as soon as that conversation is over. And the same thing works with pens. Um, so I say talk about pens. Uh, Let them which, try it in a controlled environment. Well, you yes, don't just want to hand them a careful. pen and walk away. You can hand them this. Yes. Uh, um, but uh, yes, if you hand them your very expensive gold nib pen, mm. they need a little supervision yes. if they've never touched one before. Absolutely. Because they, they, not every one of them, but people could press too hard on the nib. Well, and even on a varsity, you have the right side up and you have the wrong side up. And so in the store in Chicago, I see people all the time using it incorrectly. And, oh, that's and if point. you don't use it in the correct way to start, then the experience is disappointing and sometimes completely turns you off. And so you have to at least help them get on the right track. And I, I give these to people when I think they're not really going to get into fountain pens. I think I mentioned that on a podcast. Mm -hmm. Or I'll give them basically a safari if I think right. they are. That's not a safari, but that's, that's an upgraded safari. Well, um, in, in Chicago, I often, somebody will come in and say, oh, I want a fountain pen. I, if they've never used one and it's just kind of a whim, I often will um, start them off with this because it's, you know, for $3.00. It's everything you need. There is no extra ink, converter, whatever. It's everything you need. And so if in two weeks they decide it's not for them, you haven't gone down this financial or, rabbit hole. Or if they lose it. Yes. Which has happened. Or Luke. someone. T <laughs> He's not going to watch this, though. Um, plus, they always write. Yes, the absolutely. Always write. They last for months they, they and have months. This, this uh, not really a fee to collector in here. That's all around. It just gets all the ink in there. They always yes. write. They're, They're very awesome. nicely made. And they come in a ton of different, well, seven different colors. That's a ton. Yeah, that's, that's a, ton. a ton. That's a ton. So that's a good starter. Really, really good starter. So yes, I have talk about pens, be passionate about pens, let them see you using pens, uh, gift a pen, um, and you had some others here, uh, a Go, a Metropolitan, mm -hmm. very popular pen. Yes. Very popular. People love that pen. And a, a preppy. preppy. I had a Preppy here last yeah. week. So, you know, the Varsity is, um, in my opinion, the easiest because it's everything you need. You can just walk away with this and you're ready to go. Um, the Preppy is my next option because um, once it starts, once it actually um, has the ink down to the nib, it writes like a champ. It, yeah, that's another one that has a collector type yes. feed with uh, all the fins all the way around. Yes. So once the once that is filled with ink, it is always a writer. It's too. a great writer. The cap snaps on, so you, you always know whether or not it's sealed. Um, great little pen, also very inexpensive. And so again, I'm always trying to emphasize um, a low. Entry point. Entry point. That would be these two. Yes, absolutely. Um, and then from there, uh, and again, the, the trick is just put it in their hand and let them play with it. Exactly. And just reinforce it. doesn't need a lot of, you don't have to be perfect. And your handwriting doesn't have to be perfect. A lot of people think, well, I can't use a fancy pen because my handwriting's bad. Oh, yeah. No, it doesn't have to be perfect at no, all. No, not at all. I mean, Yours perfect is very example. nice, though. This is, this is lovely. It's fine. <laughs> It's fine. No, it's it's fine. fine. Oh, go on. Um, but no, these are these are two really great options. And again, if it's somebody who just is maybe considering it for the first time, I'm a big fan of not going too deep too soon. That which would be these two. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I agree with that. And that's if uh, these these are so inexpensive, you can give them to anybody you want to try and get into fountain pens. Including Luke, who lost one? Uh, the same day I gave it to him. Oh, no. Same day. And then he wouldn't take another one. I, I tried to give him another one because I... Uh, 
Did he put it in his apron and wash it? He put it? it in his apron and then it disappeared. Oh my gosh. I don't know. I don't know. At least that's what he says. Okay. But uh, I don't know. Um, I like to, uh, when you give somebody a pen, encourage them to try. They don't have to write cursive. No, not just everybody can write cursive. More than just a line. More than just a line. Write the way you usually write, and then uh, if they do get a little interested, a little interested, you can encourage them to uh, copy a different font, a different hand, right. uh, like something uh, like Unchel. Uh, I is, could never do that. It's very easy to copy, though. It's very easy to copy, and it makes you all of a sudden you feel artistic. Oh, look what I did! Okay. Um, and so we don't really have a lot of reasons to write these days with computers and phones and all that. I do my my to do list every day. I don't do it in Unchel, but that I would could. Take forever. <laughs> yeah, that that would take a little while. Um, so having a few, or like get a. a an italic nib mm -hmm. on something. Like a pilot a, a, parallel. A, or yeah, a pilot, but the smallest of the pilot parallel is a perfect starting point for uh, learning some sort of calligraphy. Right. Uh, what is it that uh, Deb, Deb? Deb Basil. Basil taught the uh, uh, basics of, I forget which hand that she, she taught. I don't know. I never took the class. No. I always had to work. But you can find calligraphy videos Yes. On YouTube. Absolutely. That will fill hours and hours, and they start at the very beginning, and it is not that difficult to get it halfway decent. But you have to practice. Practice, yeah. Practice. You, the, well, the more you practice, the better you get. Um, and and I, I think that helps when people can make something that they think is pretty. Yes. Uh, or oh, It's that's, inspiring. That's the nicest handwriting I've ever had. Yes. And it doesn't have to be cursive. The other thing you can do is take this person to a pen store. Or a pen show. Or a pen show. And one is coming up. Yes. Uh, the end of this month. Yes. It scares me. Why? Brian will Brian's be there unsupervised. Un unsupervised. First yeah. time in 12 years. <laughs> the first time? No, you sent him to Miami once. But he was working then. Yeah, that's it what he told you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should um, have been working. I don't know what the situation is these days, but uh, when I was in third grade, which wasn't too long ago. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> um, that's when they started teaching us cursive. And uh, Mrs. Walden made us use a fountain pen. Really? Yeah, because she gave us paper that was practically blotter paper. Right. Uh, so in order to encourage us to keep the hand moving, she made us use, I don't even know what we used. I don't Something remember we what we used. Well, I remember. That okay. it was a fountain pen, and that was the first time I had really used a fountain pen. Okay. But I think we should encourage our school districts to continue teaching cursive, not yes. just for the love of fountain pens, but because I think it is very helpful to young brains. Uh, I think. Okay. I don't have any scientific data to back that up, but I could probably get some. Or um, make some. Or make some. Uh, that's the long-term one, though. Okay. You, you want the school districts to be teaching cursive so that someday this person will like fountain pens. That's a long-term goal. Yes. For the person who, your neighbor, uh, just give them a pen and take them to the Chicago Pen Show. Or whichever pen show. My first pen show was the L.A. Pen Show. Oh, that's a big one to start with. Oh, my God. It was, it's, was my uh, home show. And the, yep. practically the first person I ran into, the first tables, was Susan Worth. So that was a lot to take in. Not yes. just Susan, but the pens yes. she had. And I did. That was the first purchase. Uh, for me at a pen show was... Uh, Do you still uh, have it? I don't think I still have it. It was a Waterman 52. Okay. That was back in the days when I was only going to buy vintage and they were all going to be under $100. You got home. a Waterman 52 for under $100? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, pretty common. Okay. You can still do that today. I always collect your ripples. Oh, well, you can't get that for under $100. <laughs> this has to be the, uh, the black... Hard rubber right. that has been a little bit abused, yes. a user pen, and that, that you can find quite easily. But usually you buy a Waterman 52 for the nib. Yes. Because you want to get a little bit of a, a flex nib on that. Any other tips? No, the, I think the most important thing is just put it in their hand and let them play with it. And if they struggle, just kind of supervise it so that you can nip any um, incorrect uh, ways of holding it 
immediately so that they get a good experience right out of the gate. Right, I forget these things because like I say, uh, in third grade, Mrs. Walden made us use fountain pens, so I've always known which way the nib goes. I, I probably didn't in third grade. I see it all the time. People try like upside down or sideways and, and many pens don't work. Well, because a lot no. of people don't pay attention. Um, one of the reasons that I like the Lamy, either yes. the Safari or the All Star, is because it has the triangular grip, it does have. which forces you at least to get the nib lined up better on the paper, and so you immediately have a better result. Right. And if they get a better result right out of the gate, then they're like, "Ooh, look at me! I can, I can do whatever." Okay. I'm an artist. Yes, that's absolutely. Really, that's how I feel I when I'm writing with a fountain pen. Oh, I I'm an artist. All sorts of interesting doodles. Uh, and I hadn't thought of starting with a rollerball, but that that is kind of the same feel. It's a very smooth. it is, especially if all they've ever used is a ballpoint. You know, your standard hotel bic, your cheap office supply cabinet pen, a rollerball. Gets you into that. Ooh, this is a smooth flow. Yeah, it's flow. a completely different feel. It's absolutely a gateway drug. A gateway drug. Absolutely. Rollerball. And Safari makes those too. Yes. Roller balls. Yes. And they also make bold ones. Yes. And pencils, I understand. They do. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we're probably missing a few things. Some really good ideas. So I'm just going to ask people to write in the comments good ways of getting people into fountain pen usage uh, because that's. That's it for my list. What I do is I give people pens. I just, here, take it, take it. And I'll hope that they get into fountain pens. But uh, watching them and, and, and getting them to learn a new hand, I find that to help, but you have to get to the point. You can't just say, here, take a pen and let right. me show you this hand. Give me an hour of your time. That doesn't always work. I spend a lot of time with people. Here, put that in your hand. Pretend you don't know anything. Beyond that, <laughs> not quite that little, but okay. So you need to turn it and then they'll write and you watch them write and you, you know, you make adjustments so that they can see the difference if they're writing echo sideways and it doesn't work, then you fix it for them. Some have a very, yeah, some people write um, way up because that's how you write with a ballpoint. Yeah, this is more of a ballpoint. Yes. And so you try and I, I always joke with them and say, okay, you got to loosen up a little. Yeah, loosen up. These pens are so nice. I can I can hook you up with Can one. you hook me up? I can, yeah. Well, maybe you will. Maybe There's something I else I have to get on the way out the door. I forget what it is already, but Jason, Justin will... will. Uh, yes, I almost said oh, Jason, you're... I'm sorry. <laughs> well, wow. I don't know where that comes from. Wow. I am getting older, you know. Hey, look, oh. I turn red and everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, you were going to get um, three JRs. Oh no, just the yellow one. <laughs> just the yellow one. I'm the one who's telling the jokes here. All right. Uh, so, what about other pens? So, I like this Safari because it has a triangular grip. And part of converting someone is making sure that it's more than just in front of you. The pen or the name? Using the pen. Yeah. It has to be more than just, oh, okay. They have to be able to know what to do when they get home. So, uh, a lot of people like the. Um, Pilot it's Metropolitan. Extremely popular. Because it's a little heavier. It's got it's metal. Um, what I like is it comes with the converter and a cartridge. So you have everything you need. I'm a big fan of a whole package. That's this one. Well, it has everything you need. Take the cap and go. off and go. Right. But you know, your next step up is cartridge and converter. And at least it gives you that option. You learn how to use a cartridge, how to use a converter. Same thing with here if you buy the converter. I like that this actually comes with the converter. And then from there, your Twisby Go. Yeah, I think the price points here are this. Where does the Twisby go in? I think it's 18. Yes. So that's the price point. Yes. Um, this one is the only one in this group that is um, bottled ink only. Right, because that's a... Which gets a little more complicated for newbies, but... Unless they like that. Unless they like that. Or if their sole purpose is to use all the zillion different colors of bottled ink, because that is half the fun. That is. Um, or a shimmer ink, so you can see it slashing around in there. <laughs> well, if that's you get the 580. But yes, if I'm going to... I do think that giving someone a pen 
gifting a pen yes. is a good way to get them into it. And I will either give them a varsity if I think they probably won't get into it or a safari, not, not an all-star, but a safari uh, because of that. They're, they're inexpensive, but they're still nice. And I like that triangular grip because it, it does make you hold the nib where it should be. Yep. And then do you let them come back to you if they're having issues? No, I or... say never speak to me again. <laughs> Get out of here, I can kid. See that. Bother yeah. me. <laughs> no, no, I mean, you. hopefully you become lifelong friends because yes, of, of absolutely. Um, I always make sure that they have, um, you know, if you're not just doing a varsity which has its own ink for months, make sure that they have an extra converter or an extra cartridge so that when you're done with the first one, you've got something else to try. Yeah, and you have to turn them onto paper too. Yes. Paper can make a big difference. Absolutely. There's a world of pens, there's a world of inks, and there's a world of papers. Yes. And, and it, if you get into it, it's very fun because it's non-ending. The other thing you can do that we haven't mentioned yet is if you have one locally or even not too locally, pen clubs. Yes. And I know we've probably got away from pen clubs during the pandemic, uh, but they're probably coming back. They and are. I know. Um, that usually in includes a beer or something, so... The, uh, the Denver Pen Club and the St. Louis Pen Club both did, and I'm sure others did, uh, a lot of virtual Virtuals, meetings. Yeah. So they kept that sense That's of community. That's difficult to get a newbie. Yes. Uh, someone yes. Who, you have to kind of be there. Because when you get a long table of a, a bunch of people yes. who not only love fountain pens, but are sharing their fountain pens, that is impressive. Yes. I have tried lots of and pens that I've never been able to. Complicated and, and noisy and chaotic. Yeah. So if you're brand new, it's easy to be intimidated. Um, whenever anybody comes into the Chicago store, I always ask where they're from. And so many people are from a city that either has a pen show that they've never known about or they're nearby. And so well, I always all over tell the country, them, really. yeah. yeah. Oh, you're only two hours from a pen show. It's right. usually in. Whenever. Two to three hours is, is not too far for a pen show. Uh, they're worth a two to three hour drive. Are you driving if you're three gonna, hours if, to go to if, Chicago? If, if you're going to spend the night. Are you going to go? I haven't made a reservation yet. Okay. But I won't be there when Brian's there, though, so I can't supervise him for you. Sorry. Sorry. I was counting on that. I have more jokes for you. Oh, oh okay. We're going to end this with two more jokes. Okay, I'm ready. Uh, I have to remember which ones did Hit I me. tell you. What do you call a row of rabbits hopping backwards? Drunk? A receding hairline. <laughs> <laughs> and this... Why can't Brian tell those? <laughs> this is probably my, my, my favorite okay. for some stupid reason. What do you get when you cross a rabbit with a shellfish? The oyster bunny. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? That is so terrible. I just like it so much. That's it for this week. Um, we'll be back next week with uh, Mr. Anderson. A Anderson Penn Sunday Brunch Menu 4, where Brian and I will discuss nail, hair, and skin care for men over 50. <laughs> no. <laughs> it says just kidding. Um, <laughs> next week, uh, uh, appropriate. That would be interesting. It will be how to navigate a pen show. Oh, my and goodness. And this will be the Sunday before he's actually going yes. to the Chicago Pen Show. My best advice. Oh, I'm Comfy gonna start shoes. Or... We're going to start with mine. Comfy shoes. Seriously. Comfy shoes. Do not bring a big backpack um, or anything heavy, a big giant purse or a big backpack. It's going to get in the way. Um, and stay hydrated because you're going to be drooling or asking a lot of questions. Or both. Or both. This is going to be interesting because I have been to many pen shows and I, I probably haven't thought about it, but I could probably have some tips on how... I like to navigate a pen show, but Brian and you, but you won't be here for next week, nope. uh, has gone to many pen shows previously as a pen show attendee yes. and has been to many as an actual vendor who probably has completely different other, different insights. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, because yeah. as an attendee, there are a lot of things you don't think about. And as a vendor, um, you know, back to the big purse or the backpack, we occasionally get people that used to have people at shows who would just kind of like, plunk their big backpack on down pens. on a tray of pens or whatever yeah. and depending on if it's in a slaughter yeah, box. Yeah, there's, there's etiquette there at a pen show that you don't necessarily know walking into your first pen show. Yes. Um, but pen shows are fantastic. Absolutely. They are, we'll, we'll talk about it next week, but they're mostly social events. 
They're mostly they so are. Cool. They're fun, and it's the best place to um, see all sorts of things and meet all sorts of people. All sorts of people who all like pens yes. and see pens you'll never see anywhere else. Of course, I never did find a Caveco safety filler at a pen show in the United States. But you have one. I have one, but that's only because Sarge. That's I think he found mean. it in Poland. So that's it for this week. Um, happy Easter, Easter, and I will see you next week. Bye. Bye.